everyone, my name is Mackenzie Bradley from the church and I'm here to do another lesson with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and pray and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord, and I thank you for giving us this day. And I pray that as we go through this lesson, Lord, that we would not only hear what you have to say, Lord, that we would do whatever you say, Lord, and that we would listen to what you're trying to teach us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So before we start with our lesson, I want to talk a little bit about tithe and offering just because, you know, we haven't been at church, we haven't been up here giving our tithe and offering, so we're just going to do a little review on it. So tithe is 10% of your money. So 10% of your money that you give to God. So I know you guys have some sort of allowance, or at least most of you do, where maybe you're, you get it from your parents or you get money for your birthday or holidays or whatever. 10% of that needs to go to God. See, God gives us everything. He does everything for us, and all he is asking is for 10% back in return. So if you get $10, you're gonna give $1 to God. If you get $5, you're gonna give 50 cents to God. Now, offering is a little bit different. Offering is still giving money to God, but it's, it's giving extra money to God. So tithe is 10%, and offering is if you wanna give more money. 10% plus 5% is 15%. So that would be all the money that you give to God. So you're not required to give offering, but you are allowed to give offering. You can give more money to God. So I just wanted to go over that just because, you know, it's been a while, so you know, a little bit of a refresher. So your mission last week was to read your Bible every single day, and I really encourage you to do this. I hope you guys read your Bible every day, or at least tried to, because that is one of the biggest parts of your relationship with God. It's not just knowing who He is and, you know, going to church, watching videos, you know, here and there or praying maybe before you go to bed. It's a lot more than that. In your relationship with God, how you grow in your relationship with God is reading your Bible, is praying with God, is spending more time with Him. I don't know how you're gonna do that this week. I just really hope that you do because it's such a big part of your relationship with God and that is how you grow closer to Him. And that's how you learn more things too and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Last week we, we talked all about how Jesus calls us to follow Him but He also calls us to be fishers of men. And being a fisher of men means that we go out and we try to bring people into the kingdom of God. People who don't know who Jesus is. Because there's a lot of people in this world who have either never heard of Jesus or have only heard of him a little bit and don't really understand it. That is why we're here. We're here to spread the gospel more so that we can all be in heaven in eternity together and not just leave people out. So really we need to bring more people into the kingdom of God. So today we're really going to talk about how can we listen to God. To listen to God, we have to follow God. We have to know who He is. So we've already got the first step down. For the second part, I'm going to ask you guys a question. What does it mean to listen to God? Or listen to a friend or listen to anybody you're having a conversation with. What does it mean to listen? Really what it means to listen is that you're giving all of your attention to that person, that you're not just hearing the words that they say, that you're comprehending it as well. A good listener isn't focused on what they're gonna say next in the conversation. A good listener is just focused on the person who's talking, thinking how can I help this person, what advice can I give them, because they're obviously going through a hard time, so how can I give them good advice? And so you just listen to them, and that's how you know what you're ta they're talking about. It's kind of like when you're reading in school. Maybe you're reading a book for school. I had to read a book and it was called To Kill a Mockingbird. I mean, it wasn't a bad book. It's just, I, I do not like to read. I hate reading. It takes me forever to read. I can't comprehend it when I read. So reading is something that's really difficult for me. So when I read, it has to be absolutely silent. I can't be anywhere where there's talking, otherwise I'll have no idea what I'm reading. So usually when I read, I go into my room, I put those soundproof headphones on. If you guys were watching the video a few weeks ago, I brought those. I put those on just to make sure I don't hear anything, just so that I can focus on what I'm reading. And I know a lot of people can read anywhere, and you know, good for you guys, that is great. But for me, I have to be in absolute silence. I have to be in a quiet place to focus on what I'm reading. So it's kind of the same with listening to God. When we listen to God, 
He speaks to us more when all of our attention is on him. He's not really going to speak to us if we're not thinking about him or if we're not focused on what he has to say or if we're not interested in what he's trying to teach us. When we pray or when we try to listen to God, we need to go somewhere quiet. We need to go somewhere where there's no noise, no siblings, no parents, just you and God. That's all that's there. When we're going throughout our week, it's really important to spend time with God, and it's important to spend our quiet time with God. You can pray anywhere, and I'm not saying that you have to be in a quiet place for God to talk to you, but it definitely does help. Our job is to listen and to learn from God. God has made this Bible, he's written this Bible and everything in his word, and he has written it for us to learn from. We didn't have to pay for it, he just gave it to us freely and said, here is my word, here is my advice, and you can read it. And so a lot of the times God will speak to us more when we're quiet. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're not spending time with God, then God's not gonna speak to you because if you're not spending time with him, you're not really focused or nor, nor do you even care what God is gonna say to you. That's kind of what the situation is. You're like, oh, I could read my Bible, but I'm gonna play video games more. I care more about what my friends are gonna say than what God can teach me. So I really want you to think about that this week, that you should spend time with God. It doesn't have to be an hour thing. It could be a 10 minute thing. And just so you know, for prayer, it doesn't have to be a, a 40 minute prayer. Does God love those? Absolutely. But he loves a, a two minute prayer just as much. You don't have to have some long sophisticated words that are really hard to understand. You can just speak to God from your heart. And that 45 minute prayer is gonna mean just as much as your two minute prayer if you mean it. So God speak to, speaks to us more when we're focused on him, when we're more focused on him. And how can we do that? Like I said, go somewhere quiet. Go somewhere where there's not a bunch of people around you talking. And once we do that, he's gonna reveal things to you. So for me, when I pray, I pray to God, and he doesn't respond to me every single time that I pray, and that's okay. God is not gonna answer your prayer every single time that you pray a prayer. Is he going to answer it eventually? Yes. Is he gonna answer it right then? Most of the time, no. Sometimes he does, but most of the time, it's gonna take more time, you know? When I'm reading my Bible, I'll read my Bible and I'm just reading the verses. I'm not trying to find something specific. I'm just trying to read the Bible to see what God has to teach me. So when I read my Bible, I ask the question, God, what are you trying to teach me today? And so when I read, I'll come across a verse and I'll say, wow, this is a really good verse. And the reason I was able to focus is because nobody else was around, because I was listening to God. You might think, well, reading the Bible isn't really listening to God. I mean, you shouldn't really use that wording, but it kind of is listening to God because God wrote those so that we could read it and get all of the information out of it, get all of the wisdom that God put into it. So when you're reading the Bible, it's kind of like you're listening to what God has to say because everything in the Bible is what God has said or what God has said to put in the Bible. So he'll reveal things to you at times when you need it. So God really can't share a lot of things with us if we're not spending time with him. The most that I learn from God is when I am reading my Bible. I also learn in other ways, but this is the most effective way for me. So when you read, God will teach you more things. I don't care if you've read that verse one time or 50 times or 100 times. You can learn something new every time you read it. I've read the book of Matthew three times, and every single time I read that book, I learn something new. So the more you read it, the more you'll learn from it, and the more that God can teach you. But the reason that I was able to learn all of that is because I was quiet, because I was only focused on Him. Imagine if you're having a conversation with your friend, and you're trying to listen to what your friend has to say, but then somebody else is talking to you at the exact same time. So it's like you're trying to listen to two people at the exact same time. That never works, because you listen to half their conversation and half the other people's conversation, and then you have no idea who's talking about what. It's kind of the same thing with God, all right? You can't be praying to God, but then also, you know, thinking about something completely different. If you're gonna pray to God, Put your focus on Him. If you're thinking, I can't do a 10 minute prayer without getting distracted, fine. Then do a two minute prayer and don't get distracted. Because that's gonna mean more than the 10 minute prayer where you couldn't really completely focus on God. 
So again, to focus on God, go somewhere quiet. Go somewhere where nobody else is. Because listening to God is a really important thing. Sometimes we'll talk to God, but we're not really talking with God. Sometimes we'll just pray to God. You know, we just want to get some things off our chest. We want to talk with God. And that's great. God wants us to do that. But sometimes we kind of just, you know, give everything to God and then we just walk away. And that's talking to God. What you want to do is talk with God. So how can you talk with God? Talking with God means you go, you pray, you pour your heart out to God, you worship Him, you maybe ask Him for help, and that's totally okay. But what you should do, here's what I encourage you to do. If you're praying and you pray and you're done praying all the, the prayers that you have, just sit there in silence for two minutes, okay? Doesn't have to be long, just two minutes, maybe even a minute, and just sit there in God's presence because that's one of the most powerful things ever and that's when God can speak to you because you're vulnerable to Him. Do I hear God speak every time I pray? No. But the times where I'm really focused on Him, that's when He speaks the most because it's the time where I'm listening the most. Again, like I've been saying the last two weeks, God is always saying something. It's a matter of are you listening to God or not? And if you're not listening to God, then you can change that. It's really easy. Put your focus on Him. Because God wants to fill our lives up with His joy and His happiness, and He wants to fill us up with His wisdom. But He can't do that if we're not trying to learn more about Him, okay? He is our teacher. So one of the ways that we can learn from God is reading the Bible and praying, but we can also hear from God through other people. So what do I mean by that? I mean, like when pastor speaks his message, all the time it speaks directly to people. So sometimes you'll maybe hear your parents say, oh yeah, that message really spoke to me today. That is God speaking through pastor to other people to get the message across. So pastor is our teacher and he's there to help us. But everything that he teaches, he got from the Bible or he got directly from God. He wouldn't teach something if he didn't know it was true or not. He is 100% sure that everything that he teaches is straight from the word of God and is straight from what God has been speaking to him about. So if you want to learn more, God speaks through pastors, he speaks through teachers, you know, I'm the teacher, so God can speak through me to you guys in maybe a situation that you're at, maybe your parents, or maybe even some of your friends. But here's the important thing that you have to remember. This is where it can get a little confusing. How do you know if you can trust someone? How do you know if what they're saying is true? That's why when we're learning more about God, it's really important to trust the person who is teaching you the word. So I trust pastor, I trust everything that he teaches and whatever he says on the weekend, whatever he says in his sermons, I know is from the word of God because I trust him. Some people you can't always trust as much. Maybe one of your friends says something and you're like, I don't think that's true. Go check it out in the Word of God. Go in the Bible and see if that's actually what God says or ask somebody. So make sure that if you're hearing God's Word from somebody that you trust that person, okay? Because God can speak through people, but make sure you're listening to the right people. So remember, listen to the people you know that you trust. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. I have some noises on my phone, and here's what I want you to do. I'm going to play the noise. I'm going to play it, and I want you to guess what the noise is, okay? I want you to guess what it is. You might get it right away. It might take a little bit, but okay, I want you to listen. Are you guys ready? I'll leave it on for a few seconds. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out or not, that noise was a clock, a clock ticking, you know. So that is the first noise. I'm going to go ahead and play to you the second noise, okay? The noise is really fast, so I'm gonna I want you to listen, okay? That noise was a cricket. So, for you to be able to listen to those, you had to be quiet. You had to be absolutely silent so that you could focus on what that noise was. So the first one was a clock, and the second one was a cricket. Some of you were like, well, those sounds were too easy. I got those right away. You know, good for you guys. Maybe not everybody got them right away, but here's my point. Sometimes when God speaks to us, we understand what he's saying right away, and that's a good thing. But sometimes God says something, and you're thinking to yourself, I have no idea what the heck that is or what he just said. I don't understand any of it, and I have been there before too. God has said something to me, and I'm thinking, where did that come from? 
So here's what to do in those situations. You pray for understanding or ask somebody that you trust for help, not just anybody, somebody that you trust. Because you might not always understand what God says the first time that he says it, but it doesn't mean that you should forget about it. It means that you should pray even more about it. See, if God answered our prayers or told us exactly everything as soon as we prayed about it, then we wouldn't really pray as much because we wouldn't have a need to pray because we're thinking, oh yeah, God's going to answer the first time I pray it anyway. See, God does that because he wants us to grow closer to him. Remember, your foundation for a relationship with God is prayer and reading your Bible and listening to God and obeying God. Obeying God is a huge thing. Pray and obey. If God tells you to do something, you better obey him because he's giving you all the tools to be able to obey what he is telling you to do. So remember this week that, you know, as you're going through everything, even though we're still kind of staying at home and I know that everybody's on summer break, or at least most of you, remember that this is a time where we can read the Bible even more because we're at home and there's not that much to do. So you can spend more time with God. Remember, it doesn't have to be an hour. It can be 10 or 15 minutes. And if that's good for you, then work your way up, all right? Remember, you need to spend time with God and ask yourself, what is God trying to teach me today? So that is our lesson today, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and read our verse. Our verse is from Matthew 11, verse 15, and it says, And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let them hear. That is a super short verse, and I know that you guys can learn it. You can still say it to your parents, and then you can give me all of the points that you have, you know, like checked off or you've written down over the last few weeks and you can bring them to me in a few weeks when we're back up here together so I can add your points because when we go to the store we're not gonna have as many points as we want because we've been gone but if you've been doing these if you've been writing down the points that you've done like memory verse mission you know set your offering aside whatever you're gonna have a lot more points and it's gonna be worth it because you get to spend it in the store so your mission this week is spend a minimum of five minutes a day praying and listening to God. What does this require? Quiet time. It requires you to go somewhere by yourself and spend time with God, all right? God might not speak to you every single time that you pray, and that's okay. What you have to do is just be willing to hear what God has to say and be willing to hear what he is trying to teach you, okay? So that is our lesson this week. I miss you guys. In about two or three weeks, we'll be able to be back together up here doing lessons together, and I cannot wait to see you guys. We do have actual services this weekend. We just don't have them up here. So I saw some of you guys, and it was great to see you. I miss you, and I hope that I see you guys this weekend. If not, I totally understand. You can stay at home. I get all of that, and I just hope that you guys all have a great week, all right? See you next week.